Welcome back YouTubers to my channel of an everyday life of an ASB. If you're new to my channel, I welcome you with open arms. I'm ASB and I'm all about creating mental health and awareness, sharing my life stories with Asperger's syndrome, OCD and the like. At this point in time, I'm trying to tidy up some of the general health or you know mental health stories, even though, as I say so many times before, many of it will be a broad spectrum of it before leading up to what I want to share with you all of some of the topics that I feel close to my heart to share, hopefully, that we will learn from each other regardless. So, in order for the two guys, basically, as a disclaimer, as well as before I begin this, is I'm no medical professional, I'm just my normal everyday self. So, if you see any signs and symptoms regarding to any of these general topics that I share, do seek professional help for yourself or your loved one so that you can be and ready to know about it forever. I don't condone self harm. So, this one's all about basically Parkinson's disease, obviously, since I'm not doing all about series for the general health or the chronic illness series that I've listed on my page. So let's begin this. So the quest first question that comes to people's mind is, what is Parkinson's disease? Parkinson's disease is a brain disorder that causes a gradual loss of muscle control. The symptoms of Parkinson's tend to be mild at first and then sometimes can be overlooked by people. The distinctive signs of the disease may include tremors, stiffness, slow body movements and poor balance. Parkinson's was originally called a shaking palsy. But not everyone with Parkinson's do, however, have a tremor. The progression of Parkinson's. While Parkinson's can be a frightening diagnosis for anybody in their life when they hear, hear about it from their doctor, the life expectancy is about the same for, as for people without the disease. For some people, symptoms may evolve slowly over 20 years. Early treatment can provide years that are virtually symptom free. About 5 to 10 percent of cases occur be before the age of 50. The early signs of Parkinson's to look out for are, even though they can be subtle and confused with other conditions, these will include 1. Slight shaking of a finger, hand, leg or lip. 2. Stiffness or difficulty walking. 3. Difficulty getting out of a chair. 4. Dif small crowd in handwriting. 5. Stooped posture. 6. A masked face frozen in a serious expression. So, for the first symptom of the tremor, I want to talk about is basically as we know this is for Parkinson's it is an early symptom for about 70% of people that may have this. It usually starts with a, in, with a finger or hand when the hand is at rest but not when the hand is in use. It will shake rhythmically usually four to six beats per second or in a pill rolling manner as if rolling a pill between the thumb and index finger. Tremor can also be a symptom of other conditions. So it, by itself does not mean that the person will have Parkinson's. Symptom, bradykinesia. As people grow older, they naturally slow down in their movements, but if they have bradykinesia, as on a Parkinson's, the slow movement may impair their daily life, regardless of what it may be. When they want to move, the body may not respond right away, or they may suddenly stop or freeze. The shuffling walk and mask-like face sometimes found in those with Parkinson's can be due to that bradykinesia. Symptom, impaired balance. People with Parkinson's tend to develop a stooped posture with drooping shoulders and their head jutted forward. Along with other movement problems, they may have a problem with balance. This increases the risk of falling. Symptom, another symptom, rigidity. Rigidity happens when the muscles stay stiff and don't relax. For example, the arms may not swing when a person is walking. They may be cramping or pain in the muscles. Most people with Parkinson's have some rigidity symptoms beyond movement. Other symptoms are quite common but not everyone with Parkinson's will have all of these but these may include the following. 1. Restless sleep or daytime fatigue. 2. A soft voice or slurred speech. 3. Difficulty swallowing. 4. Memory problems, confusion or dementia. 5. Oily skin and dandruff. 6. Constipation. The diagnosing of Parkinson's. Brain scans are not generally used to diagnose Parkinson's, although they may be used to rule out any other conditions that is entailed with this. Instead, the doctor may ask you to, one, tap your finger and thumb together or tap your foot to check for slowed movement, two, rest your hand to observe your tremor, three, relax while he or she moves your neck, arms, leg and legs to check for rigidity, four, stand while being gently pulled from behind to check for balance. What causes Parkinson's? A small area in the brainstem called the 
Niagara Controls movement, which I'm going to have an illustrator somewhere in the top or left hand side of the screen to discuss this. And Parkinson's disease. So this is the Substantia Nigra stop making dopamine, which is a brain chemical that helps nerve cells to communicate within each other. As these dopamine making cells dies out, the brain does not receive the necessary messages about how and when to move. The stages of Parkinson's. As we know, many, many aging or chronic illnesses do tend to have stages, basically, and we need to know about this as well. So basically, what happens here, we know Parkinson's is really progressive, which means changes continue inside the brain over time. Doctors will then measure the stages by a careful measurement assessment by your symptoms. The Hone and Yar scale is one of the common tools that looks at the severity of symptoms. The Unified Parkinson's Disease Rating Scale evaluates mental clarity and function, behavior, mood, activities of daily living, and movement. Staging can help determine the best treatment possible for you. Treatment, levodopa. Levodopa or L-dopa is a drug that the brain converts into dopamine. It's been used since the 70s and is still most effective today. It reduces bradykinesia and rigidity, helping people to move more easily. Eventually, levodopia may be wear off quickly. It shouldn't be taken with a high protein diet, just to be in mind. Levodopia is also most commonly combined with carbidopa to prevent nausea and vomiting, allowing more levodopa to get to the brain. Other side effects may include drowsiness, hallucinations, paranoia, and involuntary muse movements. It may happen with long term use. Another treatment to look at is maybe dopamine agonists. Drugs that mimic dopamine called dopamine agonists may be used to delay the movement related symptoms of Parkinson's. They may include Epikine, Myprax, Paralodale, the skin patch, Nupro, and Requip. Epikine and injectable may be used with when the effects of le levodopa begin to wear off. The side effects to look out for are nausea and vomiting, drowsiness, fluid retention and psychosis, treatment, other medications. Comptan and Tasma can improve the effectiveness of levodopa with the possible side effects of diarrhea. Patients on Tasma need regular monitoring of their liver, however. Stelevo combines levodopa, carbidopa and antisipone, the drug in Comptan, as illicit Allodipol, MSAM and Zalipub, which slows down the breakdown of dopamine, may be prescribed early in the disease or used along with levodopa. They should not be used with certain antidepressants. Okay, another another way of looking at it is surgery, deep brain, brain stimulation. I think I've got an image somewhere that will be on the top or bottom, top left or right of the screen to show you how that works briefly but uh, short and brief is what happens here is electrodes can be implanted into one of the three areas of the brain the globus pallidus the thalamus or the subthalamic nucleus on well or both sides the pulse generator goes into the chest near the collarbone Electropulses are then stimulating the brain to help reduce a patient's rigidity, tremors, and bradykinesia. It doesn't stop the progression of Parkinson's or affect other symptoms. Not everyone is a good candidate for this surgery, however. Another surgery to look out for maybe is pallidotomy and thalamotomy. These surgeries use a radiofrequency energy to destroy a pea-sized area in the globus pallidus or the thalamus. These areas are associated with the tremors, rigidity, and bradykinesia. So movement generally improves after surgery with less reliance on levodopa of the common drug that is used. But because these surgeries are irreversible, they have become less common than the deep brain stimulation that I've just clinically shared. Okay, a better diet for Parkinson's. It's important to have a well-balanced diet that contains calcium and vitamin D for bone strength. Although protein can interfere with the levodopa, you can avoid the problem by taking the medicine about half an hour before meal times however if you have nausea take your medicine with crackers or ginger ale eat a high fiber diet with lots of flaws that can prevent constipation the question you might be asking can parkinson's be prevented researchers are still investigating supplements or other symptoms that may protect the neurons from the damage of parkinson's but it's too soon to tell or to say whether they work or not Coffee drinkers and smokers may have a lower risk of developing Parkinson's, although smoking obviously has other serious health problems, as we know. Parkinson's and exercise. Exercise may have a 
protective effect by helping the brain to use dopamine more vertically and it also helps improve coordination, balance, gait and tremor. For the best effect you should exercise consistently and, have, and as co intensely as you can, preferably three to four times a week for an hour. Working on a treadmill or biking have shown to have some benefits. Tai Chi and yoga may also help with balance and flexibility. Living with Parkinson's. Parkinson's affects many aspects of daily life, but with medications and changes to your life, you can remain active. It's all in the mind and it's all about up to you though, however. Medication can help you cope with mood disorders such as depression and anxiety. An occupational therapist can provide a home safety evaluation. You may need to remove things that you do trip on, such as throw rugs or cords and add grab buzz in the bathroom. A speech therapist can help with swallowing and speech problems, however. Well, this quickly ends a real short and brief, basically, all about Parkinson's disease. Give me the like for thumbs up for support. Comment below if you missed out anything. Feel free to open up for discussion to how you cope with it if you've got one. Feel free to sh share these videos around. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Feel free to turn the notification bell so you can keep up to date and know what I'm up to. So without further ado, guys, thanks for the support. Thanks for watching. Do love what you do, what you love, love what you do. Until next time, SBC.